Well, just as you think this cancel culture really can't get any sillier, it does. The cancel culture movement has attacked faulty towers, statues, memorials and even Harry Potter. Now the latest thing on the agenda are the well-loved anthems Rule Britannia and Land of Hope and Glory. Now apparently BBC executives have wrestled with whether the lyrics are out of step with the Black Lives Matter movement. And as someone who grew up in Britain, the proms are a much-loved annual event taking place at the Royal Albert Hall. Most people don't even know the words to these songs and simply just end up humming along to the beat of the music. Well, apparently it's the chorus that has attracted the most ire given Britain's naval history and wealth derived from selling Africans on the transatlantic slave market. Now, I'm certainly not going to sing it on national TV, but the chorus contains the lyrics, rule Britannia, Britannia rule the waves, Britons never, never, never shall be slaves. So in true irony, let me give the woke and the cancel culture a mini history lesson. The song has been going since 1745 and the word Britannia is derived from Britannia, which comes from the Greek term that the Greek historian Diodorus Siculus used for the Britanni people, whom the Greeks believed lived in Britain. Thank goodness British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has finally called a spade a shovel. And just as cancel culture were about to behead the beloved anthems of Rule Britannia and Land of Hope and Glory, Boris has said exactly what needed to be said. I think it's time we stopped our cringing embarrassment about our history, about our traditions and about our culture. And we stopped this general out of self-recrimination and wetness. But while most level-headed people simply roll their eyes at what will be next, it is important to remember that for everything cancel culture wants to cancel, it is actually cancelling out someone else's culture. I always say you cannot look at things through the prism of 2020 and apply it to 1745. Continually looking for outrage and blurring real-life causes with a whipped-up mob mentality simply results in activists and their organisations becoming richer at the expense of all of the rest of us. And now I'd like to bring in Kai um, for your view. Rule Britannia, Britannia rule the waves. <laughs> How did I do that? OK, I've got to admit, my cultural connection is pretty limited to those songs. Uh, I've mainly heard them when I've been watching, like, say, the Rugby World Cup and, you know, the Poms break out with it in the stands. Um, you know, but, uh, look, that said, you know, we we're obviously talking about this broader issue um, of our past and when there are uh, elements of our past that are not great, right, um, and the whole issue of colonialism and colonisation, I think, is one of them. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of it is associated, for example, with slavery, of expansionism and a lot of terrible things that happened back then. Um, but, um, look, I'm not going to be one of these people that tries to say that, you know, colonialism was a necessary evil... Um, other than to say the past is always going to be mixed. Look, I, you know, I, I come from minority, a minority background. Uh, you know, the Chinese people uh, in the past have been treated pretty badly. Didn't come out too well uh, during the Boxer Rebellion, for example, against the Poms. Um, but um, I think that we always do have a choice um, about how much we want to place in the past and how much we hold on to that past and let it hold us back. And... Look, while I, of course, understand how many minorities might point to uh, the British Empire's troubled past, slavery, for example, and trace it to problems that still exist today um, and how that they, their lot really isn't much better, uh, well, isn't, isn't uh, on an equal footing to many others. Um, but I think that if a lot of those uh, minorities are going to move forward, I think it's important to think about the future and try to let go of some of these things, and especially when there is a strong sentimental attachment for many people, not to the slavery aspect of it, but for the other aspects. I mean, I think, let's face it, I think a lot of Britons know um, that, you know, the British Empire ain't what it used to be. And so there's probably just a little bit of wistfulness when they sing those kind of songs, and maybe we should just let them have it. Yeah, thank you very much. Corey, your view? Well, I say brava because that was excellent. I, uh, I really agree with your opinion. But uh, I will also agree with Kai that I think the Chinese people have been 
treated terribly in parts of history, most notably by their own government, where uh, tens of millions of them were killed uh, as they had the purge and uh, imposed communism on them. And this is one of the symptoms. It is not uh, dominant democratic powers that are oppressive. It is actually leftist totalitarian governments. It's the same, happened the same in the Soviet Union. We see it the same in, in parts of Africa and we see it through expansionism in parts of Asia as well. So the lefties who go down this path of cancel culture, and invariably they are lefties, are trying to destroy Western civilization, Western tradition. I don't think anyone gives a hoot about the words to uh, rule Britannia uh, or land of hope and glory. What they like is the stirring anthem. It represents or re re reflects uh, a memory or a time or a sense of their own uh, culture and history and on they should go singing it as loud as they possibly can. But full marks to Kai, who I think is the only one with the courage enough tonight <laughs> to actually have a crack at it on this show. <gasps> Is that a challenge? <laughs> I, I, I have to well, say, I actually performed in a uh, Gilbert and Sullivan musical uh, when I was in high school, and we had to sing, <laughs> Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. So oh. I actually sing that quite often. That is so good. <laughs> you even had the little I... tremor in the voice. <laughs> well done, Sarah. <laughs> I suppose I now, need to Sarah. stop singing and start talking, but look, let's just have a Gilbert and Sullivan sing-along. No, look, I, I, um, I do agree that there is a, a place in a, a civilised democracy and a, a smart culture to constantly re-evaluate, we evolve, we grow, and, and sometimes uh, bits of our culture need to move with us. So I actually think that's, that's legitimate and that's not necessarily cancel culture. But something like this is a big own goal. Public sentiment was overwhelmed against the BBC on this move. It's little wonder that Boris Johnson came out and decided, as Kiralee said, not to mince his words, uh, that it was time to call a spade a shovel because why wouldn't he when he knew that 90% of the population thought we've probably got bigger battles than this? I think it's a, it's a rousing song. I probably didn't do it justice. It's a lot more rousing when you've got the full chorus singing it and I, I think that that's one that we can let go through to the uh, the cultural gatekeeper. Yeah, but it does bring up that issue that I brought up at the start, which is it's so important to have media that represents this country in every dimension. And look, I still think the BBC, or the ABC here for that matter, still does amazing journalism in places. Um, but any time you have incidents like this, this is what causes a lot of people to lose faith uh, in our media institutions and often the good journalism that's still happening there. Well, that's uh, another can of worms I think you could open there, Kai. 